Welcome back, adventurers. This week, we bring you an exciting walkthrough showcase of the Windelo 54. This innovative, eco-friendly and high-performance yacht also boasts luxury and space as a blue water cruiser. Check out all the amazing features and see how they've addressed going green with electric engines and maintaining long distance motoring capacity. And tell us in the comments below if this is the most eco-friendly yacht on the market. We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors, sailing and traveling around the globe. Join us as we share the adventure and explore the beauty of the world, because life is better barefoot. Okay, so we are very excited today to see the Windello 54. They have made great improvements, but this is an amazing boat. We have seen it before, but we haven't shown it on our channel. So today we'd like to have a look around. I'm John Good McIntosh morning, John. from Barefoot Doctors. Good to see you again. I'm Stefan with Windelo, Director for Sales and Marketing. Uh, Windelo is a really interesting boat. So do you want to tell us, first of all, what the Windelo is made of, because that's unique, and yes. also how you are a green boat as well. Yes, thank you. So reducing our impact on the environment, is absolutely key to everything we do at Windelo, both in the build of the boat through eco, eco composite, and we can talk about that, and the use of the boat. Uh, we have now achieved a boat that is electrically propulsed, mm. uh, hybrid if need to be, but it's mm. electrically propulsed, and uh, she's uh, self sustained from renewable energies in most okay. of her use cases. Okay. The construction of the boat is by employing basalt mm -hmm. fiber, so it's actually this rock, basically, the basalt rock. Uh, which is turned into uh, fiber and the process to achieve this fiber requires 10 times less water and 10 times less power than producing glass fiber. Wow. So uh, that's, that's the first angle to reduce okay. the impact that we're having on the environment by building new boats. And then in terms of the composite, obviously this is the basalt after uh, infusion and throughout the boat more than 50 percent of the core of the composite is from recycled plastic bottles or pet foam okay so all in all this piece of composite has a co2 impact reduced by 47 percent the outcome is actually stiffer it's uh, 19 percent stiffer than uh, glass fiber a uh, stiffer boat you know uh, makes a bit less noise uh -huh. and, uh, and, and performs better. It's actually pretty good in terms of insulation as well. Oh yeah, of course. These are samples of recycled plastic, right? So uh, plastic bottles. It comes from, uh, wow. from plastic bottle sheds, I suppose you can uh -huh. call them. Uh, mm. And that's through the build of the boat. Uh -huh. And then, you know, of course, that's phase one. Uh -huh. Phase two is the usage of the boat, so everything we do in terms of renewable energies yeah. uh, and having a self-sustained boat uh, okay. without fossil fuels. The name Windelo actually stems from, from this uh, oh, yeah. and, and uh, environmentally, environmental responsibility is really part of our DNA. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, our founder was once in Cap Verde on oh, yeah. Mindelo Island oh, right. oh, the ha -ha. and from the top of a hill saw a, a really, what looked like a really colourful beach and said let's go mm. and explore uh, it's all plastic and bottles. when he got down to the uh, bottom what a disappointment was uh -huh. it was actually and this is uh, more than 20 years ago uh -huh. and already then it was plastic trash uh -huh. on yeah, the beach yeah. and so that stuck with him and obviously yeah. you know Windelo is a wind propulsed boat, uh -huh. electric propulsed, so okay. there's a lot of that in the name. But there's also a callback to this experience in Mindelo right. and thinking, okay. guys, we have to do something about okay. the impact we're having yeah, on the environment. Yeah, great. Yeah. So we do everything we can. Now, of course, building an environmentally or more environmentally friendly boat is one aspect. Uh -huh. uh, and that's not enough, right? The boat has to have other good qualities. You wouldn't buy a While boat just because it, it's, uh, uh -huh. uh, it's more environmentally friendly. Uh, you might buy it because it's electric and self-sustained, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's a boat that uh, innovates in different ways as uh -huh. well. So uh, it's a proper blue water going boat mm -hmm. and also a very safe boat with the front cockpit. A nice boat to live on in terms of the space, the uh -huh. volumes that we offer and a single floor plan here, uh, okay. for example, upstairs on the upper deck. So the engine uh, down here, first of all, doesn't take up much space. There's a lot of storage left. Yeah, for, you yeah, know, we have clients have bicycles and all sorts. We put dive compressors, dive bottles in here. Uh, the engine doesn't take up much space or weight. 
This is purely electric and there is a gen set in the other engine compartment for hybrid. Uh, so we try not to use it. It's a series, it's an electric hybrid as opposed to a diesel hybrid. And the interesting thing about these engines is that they have zero maintenance intervals. They have no wear and tear parts. Uh, the only thing they have, there's a, cool, there's a heat exchanger and a cooling system for the engines and the controller. So the only thing you need to do from time to time is top up a bit of cooling. Okay. Virtually don't break down ever or exactly. need any maintenance. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm in the engine room. Here is the steering column. Wow, the rudder post is not vertical. That's really interesting. Obviously fiberglassed in supports for the rudder post, big cross beam. That's the sensor for the Autohelm to know where it is. This is the Autohelm drive, Ray Marine. This is the direct tiller control, I would be thinking. Nice, neat electronics. I'm just about to turn the engine on. So we'll see how quiet the engine is, despite... Here we go. Props turning. Wow. I'm above the engine. <laughs> the noise is the propeller. That is incredible. Nice, quiet engine. So just for comparison, here's a Belmarine diesel hybrid and this device clamps onto your existing diesel. So together, they are very large and heavy. Automatic fire extinguisher, which obviously after our experiences is a really good idea. Hi guys, thanks for watching. And if you're new to our channel or you haven't subscribed yet, we're encouraging you to subscribe because we really wouldn't want you to miss out on all the exciting stuff we have coming up in the future. And that'll also help us get the videos out to more folk as well. So go ahead and do it right now, guys. Make it happen. These are 20 kilowatts each. Right. Bearing in mind she's a performance cat, right? She's a light boat performance cat. She sails in three to four knots of true wind. That's all you need. Very maneuverable. Okay. There's a lot of torque to these engines uh -huh. as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, moving the boat at six knots requires five kilowatts per engine. Right. And that's a quarter of the available power. Uh -huh. uh, but per engine, that's a quarter of what they can deliver. And yeah. bear in mind, you can use a, an electric engine on full power. And so, you know, that's ample, yeah. ample power. Uh, and then uh, whilst we're on that, if we talk about the gen set, the gen set is 18 kilowatts. Right. So if you're using 10, you're still charging 8 at that point. There's more power coming from the gen set oh, than what so, you need yeah, to actually yeah, run the boat. Yeah. Well, after looking at the electric engines, so this is one of the key sources of power yeah. for the electric engines. On the roof here we have about 4,600 watts of solar. Our boats now go to 5,900, quote, 6,000 watts. Interesting use cases from this. Uh, we were at the uh, Miami Boat Show a couple of months ago. We were running air conditioning in the boat, self-sustained from solar. Uh, you know, we're probably one of the only boats or the only boat that doesn't plug up to shore power to run, uh, to run air conditioning. And of course, the main use of this is to charge up your batteries at anchor. You know, running a family on board with water makers and all the comfort you have on board, this amount of solar is not a debate. You're actually still charging your batteries for propulsion. So, uh, you know, at anchor, within two days, you'll have charged up fully. And then, of course, on the sail, couple that up with the hydro generation. So the engines that we saw hydro generate, it's not a separate device. The propeller actually revolves yes, again. It's on a direct shaft. You can generate about a kilo, 1.2 per engine at 12, 11, 12 knots is sort of the sweet spot. You can start at eight knots of boat speed, but 11, 12 knots is the, is the sweet spot. It's actually the average speed that we've been doing with this boat over the last four weeks. And what's what the weight we of the boat? It's 12.8 uh, tons light. Are they folding props or feathering props? They or are feathering props. Feathering. So oh, they're not or... variable, um, but it's more the angle of the shaft that we've got right, the size of the prop and the angle okay. of the shaft that we've got right. We figure that the use case for hydro generation isn't necessarily to generate as much as you can in the shortest amount of time possible and therefore have some more complex system. Yeah. We prefer a simple system because the use case to us is, you know, you're going to be sailing 12 hours, yeah. 24 hours across the Atlantic. Yeah. You're not trying to achieve a few hundred watts more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're sustaining yeah. your life on board.
board and charging. So there is a little bit of noise, but very marginal. Is there any issue with if you're running your prop for three week crossing of the no, Atlantic? You no, no issue. issue no that? issue at all. Okay. No. There are no wear and tear <laughs> parts in the engine. And so obviously then this is one of the key one of the key sources of power, but associated with hydro uh -huh. generation. And over there we can see we have a wind turbine uh, on oh, this yeah. boat as well. And all this is nicely integrated by the Windero system. The wind turbine is obviously not the biggest producer, uh -huh. as we all know, uh -huh. uh, but it's an alternative source. And it will work when they stop working, yeah. for example. Yeah. In terms of sailing, these are proper ocean-going catamarans. Yeah. Uh, you're asking who our clients are, you know, 90% of our clients uh, around the world, live aboard around the world yeah. sailors, uh -huh. at least with the aim uh, uh -huh. of doing uh -huh. that. I presume a boat like this would be not the first boat, but a second boat, somebody with experience, somebody that wants Mo the performance. Yes, most cases, yes. Clear, you're right, clear. they're often upgrading uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. to, to one of these and have or should have some experience in, yeah. in the bag. Though we do also have some uh, pretty newcomers to sailing and we'll you know we'll support them to okay. get where they where they, they need to okay. be and right. they might start with sailing you know uh -huh. in the med but certainly the boats are designed for that type of you know life on board and okay. and ocean ocean crossings oh yes yes uh -huh. uh, even even one right on okay. watch uh, from the cockpit our naval architect is Christoph Barrault and oh, Frederick yeah. Neumann yeah. Yeah, the duo yeah. so you know typical uh, we have thin very thin bows inverted bow uh -huh. angled in so uh, we're, we have two meter freeboard above the water mm -hmm. where actually you can see we're pretty high here uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, in comparison to boats around us so definitely in that category so yeah. definitely performance uh -huh. uh, oriented. performance oriented uh, hulls uh -huh. dagger boards yep so we have uh, you know really good performance upwind we have monohull pointing yeah, I performance. Know, it's lovely isn't it and our dagger bolts are actually vertical and uh -huh. central in the hull uh -huh. where they have you know a lot of effect and you can use both of them symmetrically uh -huh. and uh -huh. you don't need to reset one uh -huh. or the other in uh -huh. every tack so uh, a bit of a difference there as well we stepped the mast far back and that allows us to your question to have a self-tacking mm -hmm. full sail uh -huh. but which, which is, is ample Big size, uh, and yeah. typically they end up being a bit smaller, uh -huh. but with the mast step this, uh -huh. this far back, it's still 45 square meters of self-tacking. Uh -huh. The main sail here is 100 square meters, right. very accessible from the roof. Uh -huh, it is. Uh, you know, when you go up there to close the, the lazy bag, which is pretty much all you have to do. Uh -huh. Very accessible. No. When you're ready for a bit more fun, we have uh, downwind Jenica, uh -huh. code zero. Uh -huh. uh, the downwind Jenica on this is about 180 square meters. So if you've got a main mm -hmm. and a Jenica out, you've be got screaming. 280 square uh -huh. meters uh -huh. of sail surface. Uh -huh. Very good performance. Uh -huh. And uh, you were saying you can there. sail starting at four knots of true wind? Yeah, she'll sail in three to four knots of true wind. Uh -huh. So you get wind speed. Obviously in low winds, upwind, you're matching yeah. wind speed. Yeah. That then yeah. is uh, Aggressive, uh -huh. and then anything you know on the on the beam, uh -huh. uh, wind speed or more. Okay. And these are hydronet sails, okay. uh, and we obviously have the uh, membrane sails, uh, as the well. membrane uh -huh. sails uh -huh. as well. So here are some real life performance figures from Windellos that are actually sailing. Close hauled, they can usually match wind speed from four to nine knots, and in higher wind strengths, they achieve eight to ten knots close hauled. Square reaching they can reach 10 to 17 knots and deep reaching 10 to 16 knots. When planing they reach 20 to 25 knots and as Stefan was explaining average speeds that he has seen sailing the boat is 11 to 12 knots which is really good. The boat has jack lines already installed. Not sure if that's standard or not. But they clearly have thought about all those safety features. And it's a big uh, trampoline too. It, this is protection as well for the cockpit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the way the boat is designed, you know, two meter free board, uh -huh. thin inverted bows, we push water outside, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. you don't get a, you don't hit the wave three times. Yeah. So we have a very high bridge uh, deck clearance uh -huh. as well. But if there is a, a bit of water coming up through the trampoline, it gets dispersed as mm. wash. With the inverted hulls, does that, is that create better upwind performance because that hull is digging down and yep. put, uh, that is the... Yep. Is yep. Okay. Yep. Big storage for uh, sails uh, <laughs> and we have a, a few of our toys down there right now. Yeah, yeah. And the other side has a skipper cabin uh, okay. kitted out with you know an independent toilet shower. A fuel tank, which to be honest this is the fullest they ever are <laughs> because we filled it up 
three or four weeks ago to go on a number of press trials. As I said, we've been living on this boat for three or four weeks now. Oh, yeah. And uh, we ended up not using it. So oh, it's uh, unfortunately still there. And <laughs> we could have uh, fueled up a lot less and carried a uh -huh. lot less weight. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, so 500 liters on board, uh, which provides the hybrid scenario yeah, in, case, yeah. in case you need it. So our decks and roofs uh, are molded as well. And we have built in the anti-skid uh, yeah, I climate shaped anti-skid yeah. into the into the mold, water runoffs from the flush hatches. Every cabin has a flush hatch, so a lot of features involved yeah, uh, yeah, in, yeah, in well this deck out. design yeah. as well. Grab rail built in to the roof. In terms of life on board, two concepts that are key to us. One is having everything on a single floor plan, as yeah. seamless as possible in terms of moving around, uh, reducing trip hazards as well. And the other one is to have ample, generous spaces. Mm. So we chose not to have an outside cockpit and an interior ah, saloon, saloon, if you like, that yeah. would be half the size. We actually have one big space, uh -huh. uh, which you can open up uh, to feel like being outside yeah. uh, and yeah. it does particularly when the boat's on the way okay. or close down if you know the weather is getting yeah. a bit rougher or wetter uh -huh. and then you still have an ample space to enjoy uh -huh. right? uh -huh. as uh -huh. if you had your interior and exterior windows yeah so that, those yeah. windows will open up you can feel the flow of air can't yeah you? immediately that's pretty special and the boat isn't even on the way <laughs> So at Anchor, we even expand this space with this terrace. So this is actually the transom, which under sail would be, you know, uh, oh, that lifts up. lifted up. Oh, and that provides a very safe transom, uh -huh, probably uh -huh. up to, you know, uh -huh, certainly uh -huh. up to waist height. Uh, and then at Anchor, uh, you want to be as close to the water yeah. and, and the swimming and whatever uh -huh, water uh -huh, activities uh -huh. are going on. So you can lower the terrace. You can actually board the dinghy from the step here okay. without climbing uh -huh. over the sugar scoops. And so it's a very modular, uh -huh. modular design close to the water. Uh, actually, we've even extended the roof. Uh, this is what they were before. So we have, yeah. you know, good shelter from the yeah. sun and from the rain. Yeah. For us, it's just part of the concept yeah. to be in the yeah. shade and shelter. Yeah. This is the, the coffee table setup. You can double up this table, raise oh, it. So you I can see. actually have eight to ten guests oh, wow. dining okay. out here on a terrace which wow. is lovely and close to the water so everything here is quite modular you adapt whether you have two people or eight people or ten people on board it's a reversible seat so that will flip over to the other side when it's when you're not using it and you can even have this open on the sail there's a choice for our owners to have what we call an l-shaped or a u-shaped galley mm -hmm. this is the most ample Gary, it's the U shape. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Very generous, right? On a 54 uh -huh. footer, this is a very generous uh, lots galley. Of lots yeah. of countertop space, lots of storage. Yeah. Uh, dishwasher, huge fridge, freezer, yeah. five kilo washer dryer <laughs> down there as well. So, uh -huh. everything you need to live on board for you know, longer periods yeah. of time. So I love the quality of the finish of the, you know, things like the Corian with the lips around the edges because it just makes sense that you don't have things sliding off benches when the seas get a bit rough, even though it is a catamaran and it's pretty stable. Also in a nice induction stove, which just makes sense because it's primarily an electric boat, right? You get one of these! <laughs> but look at the space of this bench. You know, one of the things you have in generally in a boat is you don't have enough bench space. So, am I right? You don't have enough bench space. <laughs> So this is really great because you've got the double sink and then you've got plenty of bench space to make a mess. Would a, whip up a storm in your own galley. A lot of volume, you know, wide openings between yeah, the bulkheads yeah. here for the, yeah. owners, uh, yeah. for the owner's suite and a lot of light coming into the boat and a lot of opportunities for your eyes to wander outside uh -huh. the boat as well, uh -huh. so the, you know, the signature L-shaped window. I love that. You can see we have two tones of yeah. wall linings. We have nice reflections in the in the corkings, yeah. and obviously a choice for our owners of various uh, interior trims and finishes. Mm. Moving forwards, what you have here is a uh, makeup table, come desk, mm -hmm. walk through closet with lots of storage. And then a 
reasonably generous uh, a very generous. shower room. Starboard side, yeah. double guest cabin here, ample uh -huh. entrance, storage behind the door there for you. We have separated the toilets from the shower room. We have a shower room with a with a hatch down there, electric plugs behind the, the mirrors and whatnot, so everything you need. Yeah, nice. And then a uh, standard uh, double cabin forwards. Yeah. And we do offer several uh, alternatives oh, yeah. uh, in here on the other side. Do uh, home office with oh, uh, fold-out beds, Pullman cabin with oh, yeah. uh, two very nice bunk beds. Awesome. And we also have a workshop. Nowadays you can actually buy an off-the-shelf electric hybrid system uh -huh, and put it in uh -huh, your boat. Uh -huh. uh, we wanted lower voltage and we wanted to be able to customize our setup a little bit. So we okay. picked what for us were the best engines, uh, uh -huh. the best batteries, uh -huh. best solar. Uh -huh. uh, and so what we've done is, uh, of course, we got all of those talking together in a system which is proprietary and that manages everything around propulsion and hydro generation and energy management on board is uh, all tied up in this, uh, in this system here. You can generate one 1 1.2 per engine, so 2, point, you know, two, two to 2.4 uh, in total at the sweet spot of hydro generation, yeah. which is about 11 to yeah. knots of yeah. load speed. In terms of the power on board, we have 60 kilowatt hours uh, total power uh, stored and that will provide uh, four hours of motoring fully electric uh -huh. without the need to switch uh -huh. the generator uh -huh. set on, um, which is ample because uh -huh. the use case uh -huh. for these boats is to the motor sail. out of the harbour, yeah. hoist a sail, yeah. you might need some motor past a leash or uh -huh. something, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but four hours is going to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then you're sailing uh, mm -hmm. already from three or four knots of true wind. Yeah. And then obviously the boat will, once she's under sail, will hydrogenerate yeah. uh -huh. plus the solar. So she's again in a self-sustained uh -huh. self -sustained scenario yeah. and she's charging again at that uh -huh. point. We, she is a hybrid, you can switch over to electric with uh -huh. the peace of mind that you do have a conventional yeah. engine on board uh -huh. with uh -huh. diesel. But if you do need to use it, that can take you a thousand one hundred miles at six knots. All managed by the system, you know, the genset will kick in and kick out. We have some clients, you know, to go across the Atlantic and they said, you know, we, we were getting ready for our Atlantic crossing and we did what everybody does is we filled up our tanks and we took more jerrycans of diesel on board, we put them along the side and, and then off we went for our transatlantic and they say, when we got to the other side, we donated diesel because we hadn't used a drop. Um, a bit more in terms of the energy, so we have all our battery uh, status here. And so what you get here is your energy balance at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, we come into the boat shows, we don't hook up to shore power, we don't run gen sets. We just know that by the end of the week when we leave again, uh, it'll be full even though fridges and uh -huh. stuff has been running. Right? Wow. Yes, so it's 48 volts. Our main propulsion batteries and the engines are 48 volt systems, so it's the gen set. And this one here, so you know, we can actually see in real time what each of our solar panel groups are, wow. is doing. So that will allow you to know if, uh, either if a panel is not functioning or is dirty or if there's shadow on it. Exactly. So you've got a separate MPP T controller for each, for of, these each of those yes. seven. Are you ready so to hear the diesel roar? I'm going to start the engine. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> rattle, rattle. <laughs> we came for the, for the show. Can't hear anything. Waiting. Can't hear anything. We're, We're actually now traveling forwards. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, well, that's very impressive. And then in terms of this, the actual sailing, we call it the front cockpit. We're actually in the center of the boat. And we are Eddie, you're exact, pretty much exactly at the center of gravity of the boat. So okay. this is the place that it makes the most sense to organize life um, around. Whether it's for sailing, cooking, uh -huh. uh, life on board, it's going to be a more comfortable uh -huh. spot. And then in terms of the sailing here, so once you've uh, hoisted your sails, everything is done from within the cockpit. Actually, even hoisting main is done from within the cockpit. So this is a very centralized and safe place. Yeah. We're committed to this setup, which means that we have the opportunity to bring all the lines yeah. uh, back to this place. It's 
open yeah. if you want it to be uh -huh. and if the conditions are good. Uh -huh. But of course, if you're in harsher weather, you'll start closing things down uh -huh. to the point where you can have the front cockpit closed uh -huh. and you can have heating in the boat and continue sailing without needing too much gear. If you're in rough water, it's, it is designated as an outdoor space and there is a drain and water can come in, uh, you know, and if it rains then there might be a, a little bit of water coming in. You as a helms person stay safe and dry. Our clients with kids appreciate this uh, because on a night passage kids can wake up from their cabin and they can actually come and join you. There is no need for life jackets uh -huh. strapping uh -huh. on uh -huh. if you want to uh -huh. join mum or dad yeah. at the helm station. Yeah. By the way, mum or dad aren't outside. So even as a couple, you know, you don't worry about your partner so much. It's typically, you might sit like on the monohull. Yeah. Uh, if you're held at those times where you're actually enjoying helming, not uh -huh. on the pilot, uh -huh. you might sit like this at a monohull, uh, uh, as a monohull, and you can see your foresails, uh -huh. you can uh -huh. see your telltales, and you can also see all through to the back of the mainsail, including the telltales after the mainsail. Back at the back you have lines that come back yeah. to the cockpit. You will hook up here. This is the only time that you need to be virtually outside, but you uh -huh. can see I'm, I'm within the boundary. Yeah. And again, we're close to the center of gravity. It feels very safe yeah. you know, coming up in daytime, nighttime, heavy uh -huh. conditions. You know, we find it doubles up to us, this, this seamless being together. Uh, and the social aspects of the boat, the, the cockpit also is part of that. Uh, just underneath, it's accessible from underneath. You don't even need to look at it? No, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't, you know, pass up to them. Yeah. Okay, good. It's really interesting because when you're down in the cockpit, you feel like you're really safe. Like, you know, the cockpit's kind of inside, outside, but you're so low that it feels like you're inside, even though you can push these windows back and open it right up and, and kind of be on the outside. But I really like that safe feeling. And you know what we're like, guys, we really love the inside cockpits because, primarily because of that safe feeling. If you have to do something at the front or you have to look at the front, you don't have to walk on the outside of the decks, which is quite dangerous in storms. So. We'd like to thank Stefan and the team here at Wendello for giving us the time and attention to show you guys the features of the Wendello 54. This is a beautiful boat. It's got lots of wonderful features as you've seen and we want to say congratulations guys because it's a beautiful product. Yeah, it's such a, a fantastic boat and, and these features go through the whole range and obviously the prices are on the website. These guys have been innovative from the start using basalt instead of GRP and then going green using recycled foam and going green with their engines and their hybrid regen systems which they are innovators in moving forward as fast as they possibly can. The high regen systems with solar minimize the amount of time you need to run the engine. So wonderful stuff. Thanks for joining us on this journey and don't forget to like and subscribe and if you want to be a part of an exciting way to save lives around the world, join our Patreon family and get up close and personal with us.